Mark Twain once said there is no such thing as a new idea, but that doesn't mean some ideas aren't more original than others. So it's no surprise that certain films attempt to build off the success of other more well-known movies. And Disney has some of the best known and most beloved films around. As a result, filmmakers from around the world have attempted to get viewers for their movies by making them look uh, familiar. Yes, if you glance at these movies quickly, you might be tricked into believing that they're the Disney movies that <coughs> inspired them. Yet these movies and their marketing add up to some comically bad rip-offs of Disney's blockbusters. In some cases, this is the result of marketing, like the people behind The Legend of Cirilla rebranding the film to be Frozen Land. In others, like Aladdin with 1D, distributors were hoping no one would notice the movie wasn't made by Disney. Then there's Leo the Lion, which uh, borrowed from The Lion King, which some claim copied the anime Kimba to begin with. Here are 10 examples of movies that tried to leverage Disney's success by copying its movies any which way they could. Disney Pixar's Up was a moving film that was so good it was nominated for a Best Picture Oscar. The animation is gorgeous, the characters are endearing, and the plot is rich and layered. It was a massive success. And it was only a matter of time before other films attempted to capture some of its magic. One of those films is What's Up, Balloon to the Rescue by Brazilian company Brinquedo. While the movie doesn't copy everything about Up's plot, it apes one of the film's most indelible plot points, a house flown by balloon power. While Carl Fredrickson used hundreds of individual balloons to ensure his house floated away, What's Up's mad scientist uses a single hot air balloon. Still, the images are comparable, and it would be easy to confuse the two films. That's where the similarities end, though. The animation of What's Up is decidedly subpar. Meanwhile, the plot is bizarre, involving a battle against aliens. All in all, the movie's a real head-scratcher. Why copy one popular film when you can copy two? That seems to be the philosophy behind Bug Bites and Ant's Life, a mashup of Disney Pixar's Bugs Life and DreamWorks Animation's Ants. While Ants has often been accused of being a ripoff of A Bug's Life, the two films are actually pretty different. And no matter which studio came up with the conceit of bringing a bug's eye view to film, it certainly was not the creators of Bug Bites. While it has the dubious distinction of being the first 3D animated mockbuster, the movie looks just terrible. Animation is challenging to do well, and the people behind this movie clearly were not up for the task. Instead, they put all their hope in tricking people who wanted to see A Bug's Life or Ants, or both, into seeing their movie instead. Brave was all about Princess Merida's journey towards forging her own path. It drew heavily from the Scottish culture it was based in, and made an impression with its striking red-headed heroine. At first glance, Kiara the Brave may seem like it stars a similarly feisty redhead. When the Indian film was distributed in America, a red-headed royal was front and center in all the promotional materials. So, viewers would be forgiven for not realizing that the character, Princess Kiara, wasn't the film's protagonist. Actually, her role is pretty minor, and she really doesn't impact the plot at all. In fact, the only reason the movie was called Kiara the Brave was to cash in on a character that bore a resemblance to Brave's Merida. The original title of the movie was Super K, the movie, and its plot centered on a heroic boy who went up against a villain called the Bad Mess. Its sci-fi plot had nothing to do with Brave's folklore-inspired story. The marketing was just designed to trick viewers into picking up this movie instead of Brave. Disney's Frozen was a worldwide smash hit when it came out in 2013. Since then, its sequel has enjoyed similar levels of success. Yes, everyone seems to love Anna and Elsa of Arendelle, and in one instance, a distribution company had the brilliant idea of using its own film's snowy setting to connect it to Frozen. The movie, The Legend of Cirilla, actually sounds like a unique story that might be worth a watch. It was Canada's first fully computer-animated feature, and its story was heavily based on Inuit culture. While it includes a magical element, the movie's plot is actually quite different from Frozen's, centering on a boy's quest to save his clan. That didn't stop the film's distribution company Phase 4 from changing the title to Frozen Land for its marketing in America. 
Instead of letting the movie succeed on its own merits, the company's branding for the movie made the title look and sound almost exactly like Frozen. It's understandable that parents looking to appease their kids' love for Anna and Elsa would mistake Frozen Land for Frozen. But imagine those kids' reaction to realizing they wouldn't be singing along to let it go after all. After getting wind of the scam, Disney sued Phase 4. Eventually, the Mouse House won, ensuring Phase 4 could no longer use the Frozen logo for their film. The Legend of Cirilla sounds a lot more interesting anyway. Ratatouille is a beautiful and surprising film about following your dreams and proving yourself. It's not only poignant, it's a lot of fun. So the studio that made What's Up decided it would be the perfect movie to rip off. Which it did, starting with its title. And what a title it is. Unlike Ratatouille, which had several layers of meaning and was an actual word, Ratatouille is a real eyebrow raiser. How is it even pronounced? Rat Ratatouille? Ratatouille? I'm gonna say towing. And what's the excuse for calling the movie Ratatouille? It turns out it's the name of the restaurant featured in the film, which is for rats and run by a rat named Chef Marcel Towing. Yikes. While Ratatouille is thoughtful and gorgeously animated, Ratatouille looks like it was slapped together for a school project. Disney Pixar's Cars franchise has been hugely popular over the years. So Disney itself decided to capitalize on it by introducing the world of planes. A place where, you guessed it, planes are alive and have created their own society. Planes was aimed at slightly younger, less sophisticated audiences than the Cars movies. Still, many accused it of being a cash grab on Disney's part. But at least Disney had the rights to the property. On the other hand, the Russian film Wings was based on the exact same conceit, but had nothing to do with Disney. While Wings' animation isn't nearly as accomplished as Planes, in the realm of the mockbusters we've seen in this video, it's not all that bad. Plus, it featured the vocal talents of Disney darling Hilary Duff, while the voice headlining Planes was the less impressive Dane Cook. In the end, though, neither Planes nor Wings won over too many fans. Speaking of cars, a blatant rip-off of that franchise came in the form of the movie Autobots from China. You might think from that title that the film has something to do with Transformers. If only. Instead, the movie is a low-quality copy of Car, starring a red car that looks eerily similar to Lightning McQueen. Even the poster for Autobots was arranged to look almost identical to the poster for Cars 2. Disney was making serious inroads into China right as Autobots was released, and had just recently opened Shanghai Disneyland and was not willing to overlook the knockoff. So it sued the company behind the film. Needless to say, the company denied any wrongdoing, but many agreed Autobots looked like a clear copy of Cars. Produced by Asylum, whose claim to fame is bringing the Sharknado films to the screen, Izzy's Way Home was inspired by Finding Dory. While Finding Dory was the popular sequel to the equally popular Finding Nemo, Izzy's Way Home isn't nearly as accomplished. While both movies center around fish searching for their families, the plots are almost the inverse of each other. In Finding Dory, Dory must get into an aquarium to find her parents. Meanwhile, Izzy is thrown out of a comfortable aquarium with her father and must find him again in the wide ocean. Still, Izzy's Way Home attempts to riff on Finding Dory's plot. Needless to say, the movie wasn't exactly successful. Its animation was terrible, with undersea characters that looked downright disturbing, and its story wasn't especially entertaining. When it comes to capturing viewers' attention with titles similar to those of Disney films, there may be none more outlandish than Aladdin. Oh, but we're not talking about Aladdin with two Ds. You know, the hit Disney film starring Robin Williams. We're talking about Aladdin with only one D. A German production company with a history of recreating popular films took this innovative approach to copying Disney. The one letter difference in the title isn't where the similarities between the two movies end, though. Both films feature the same main characters, including a big blue genie. Still, the German production is obviously cut rate. The animation is amateurish, and the voice acting is even worse. Only two voice actors do all the parts, which doesn't lead to great characterizations. Plus, the voice track only occasionally syncs up with the animation. No matter how similar, this movie is no substitute for Disney's Aladdin. Just a few years ago, Disney and Netflix announced an exciting partnership that would bring Disney titles to the streamer. When Disney decided to take back its content to use on its own competing streaming service, Netflix decided it needed more non-Disney animation. Netflix has so much original content that sometimes it doesn't exactly seem discerning. And Leo the Lion is one example of this. 
the movie fit a niche Netflix was trying to fill. So quality or complete lack of it wasn't going to stop the streamer from making it part of its offerings. Created by an Italian company 15 years ago, Leo the Lion centers on a young lion who's a vegetarian. Like the Lion King Simba, Leo has to go on an adventure to find himself. But Leo the Lion is no the Lion King. Leo the Lion's animation is barely watchable. The editing's confusing, the dialogue's terrible, and the voice acting is uncomfortably bad. So perhaps it's no wonder that the movie isn't available on Netflix anymore. Some might say that The Lion King was ripe for copying, as many believe it was a copy itself of the anime Kimba the White Lion. And admittedly, the one-letter difference between the two films' main characters is suspicious. Also, a side-by-side -side comparison of keyframes in the two films shows there are some striking similarities. While Disney probably won't ever admit to it, it certainly seems like The Lion King took at least some inspiration from Kimba. Do you know any other Disney movies that were recreated in other countries? Share them in the comments. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to The Binger before you go. Thanks for watching.